All right. I definitely have to go off camera. I am still gathering so much stuff from this mess. So I'm reading and I can't be looking up at the screen. So I have this book, Hollywood Babylon. I'm just looking around. You can't make this mess up. Hollywood been demonic. Like it was born demonic. I can't stop reading it. They were not letting people get this book. As soon as it came out, it was banned. It starts off saying that, you know, Hollywood would be the new Babylon. When Hollywood acting and, and the movie scene first happened, they thought we just going to use hired help to be like actors and actresses. They didn't think nothing of it. But then they realized that people were captivated not only by the movie, but the characters that play these movies. They saw that they were starting to flock to them. They wanted to emulate them. And that was the beginning of the stars being formed. Okay, so one of the notable stories, there's this comedian. His name was Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. And uh, he started off as a plumber's helper, but he was discovered by Mac Sennett in 1913. He was unclogging pipes. Now, nah, literally, he really was. Uh, he unclogged this producer's pipes and he was offered a job on the spot. However, this dude ended up working his way up into the Hollywood system, he was making people laugh like crazy. Now, it's funny because in 1913, he was making $3 a day. And it jumped from $3 a day to in 1917, he was making about $5,000 a day. And that is when he was signed to Paramount. And he had this big sign that says, Paramount welcomes the Prince of Wales. When he signed his contract and he was moving up, they hired about 12 Ladies, party girls, they call them. They were paid about $1,050. Now, where does this sound familiar? They had parties that lasted days. Now, in this party, there was somebody that was not happy with what was going on, and it was reported. So they had this table where everybody would undress, him and the girls and everything. And, you know, back then, in like the 1917s and stuff like that, you couldn't do half of this crazy stuff. And it was illegal, actually. So they ended up paying about $100,000 to a district attorney because it was reported and it ended up getting in front of a judge. And the district attorney got paid like $100,000 just to like, yo, just shut it up, please. Leave it alone. And they did just that. So fast forward, there was a girl named Virginia. Yo, why is it a coincidence? Rappy. I don't know. It's, it's, pretty, it's spelled R-A-P-P-E. But what happened to this girl? I'm like, yo, sometimes I'm like, yo, names are just made for certain people. Because this was the first biggest scandal. So now Virginia, she liked to sleep around. She was doing like small films and stuff like that. But she would sleep around and she passed out crabs to a lot of men. Yes, crabs. You heard me. And it's so hilarious the way they dealt with the crabs because they just um, shut, they shut down sets and had to fumigate. The whole place. Now, I don't know if that's how crabs, you get rid of them, but I don't even, do Do they even survive out of, or for people? Like, anyway, so your man Fatty, because they call him Fatty. So y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. It's, it's Arbuckle. Your man Fatty saw this girl and he was like, I want her. So he invited her to come to his party because he was throwing a big party. He was celebrating his um three-year contract. And he was getting $3 million from Paramount Studios. So he arrived in his, what is it? It's a Pierce Arrow car. Now it was swift. It's nice. Um, it was $25,000 back then. And this is a 1917. So imagine what that is now. So we arrived there late Saturday night, right? Um, they rented hotels. He took uh, three adjoining suites on the 12th floor of this hotel, St. Francis. He, they had a bootleg guy that comes and they give him all this liquor and booze. So yeah, the party started what? Saturday night. They said Labor Day afternoon, Monday, September 5th. The party was still going on and it was going strong. How many people was partying these many days? Now, back then they were saying that everybody was on that cola, the first word, and they were drinking gin, but it was laced. 
And they was like the girls with, you know, take tops off and shimmy, 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 shimmy. People were walking around in pajamas and bathrobe for days. So this is what I'm saying. When y'all are talking about this, this ain't nothing new. Come on. I am talking about 1917. This book was banned. Now, Arbuckle had his eye on Virginia. So he, you know, he had invited her to the party because he was like, oh, this is his chance. So they were sitting there drinking whatever they drinking. He watching them. And they go up to room suite 1221. And he gave his dude a wink. And he's like, this is what I've been waiting for. He tells them to go upstairs and he locks the door. All right, so... Listen, um, trigger warnings, trigger warnings like crazy. Please, if you can't stand it, get out of the kitchen. Caution, trigger warning. They don't want everybody's hearing screaming. So what happened was the girls, they, they, he's yelling to them, get her dressed, get her out of here. And he's like, shut up or I'm going to throw you out of the window. Sound familiar? Like why do these Hollywood people like to throw that, like to do that? Anyway, she's yelling, I'm unaliving. You know, the other word. Like, I don't know how she knew that this was going on, but she said, he, I'm hurting. He hurt me. He hurt me. That's what one of her friends, Alice, she testified in court later, right? So, yo, they was like, everything was cut up undergarments or anything. They, they couldn't put nothing on her. So they had to like throw something else on her and take her to the hospital. And she tells the nurse, Fatty, she gives the whole name. Fatty Arbuckle did this. Please make sure he doesn't get away with this. And she goes into a coma. She was no longer at the age of 25. And she was supposed to star in this role, Twilight Baby. Now, everything, almost, they tried to, these heifers tried to cover this mess up. So now, San Francisco, the deputy coroner, his name is Michael Brown. He was like suspicious after like he got this weirded out phone call. So he's like, listen, I got to figure out what's going on because it sounds like something is going awry. And they said that this is the beginning of Hollywood's cover up. 1917, dude. So the coroner arrived just in time because he's like, look, let me go down there and figure out what's going on. So when he got there, yo, he just got there in the nick of time to see um, one of the orderlies was coming from the elevator and headed towards the hospital incinerator. And he they had a glass jar of, um, see, I got to be very careful the way I say these things. Um, body situations. He was, they were trying to discard some of them so that it was a female body situations so that they couldn't know that she had like ruptured, um, things inside of her. You understand? Hmm. Later on, it was revealed that your man was violent as hell. So yeah, I'm looking at the pictures in this book and the hotel looks a mess. Like the stories that I've heard about celebrities and their hotels and, and stuff looking a mess. My gosh, what the heck? The fact that this book was written in 1975 about something that happened in 1917 is very alarming to me. So your man was charged, Arbuckle, Fatty, Fatty Arbuckle. He was charged with, um, you know, taking... And unaliving, um, cold blooded in the first degree. This shook Hollywood because they looked at these people like, oh my gosh, you're a star, you're this, you're that. So now everybody's like, what the hell is going on in Hollywood? And not to mention the tabloids read movie star unaliving. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this word. Um, orgy, yo, they got bottles of champagne bottles with her picture on it i'm not saying that that's what happened but you know they said they trying to figure out what he was shoving like an animal yo and you know what i love the head coroner because he caught it because they were definitely trying to get away with this mess but in the beginning when something is not a well greased machine you get the remnants of it hence this book coming out the coordinator was trying to find steps demanding to not have this mess happen any further. The churches, they were pissed off. They demanded retribution. 
And San Francisco wanted Hollywood out of there. Yo, shout out to Hartford, Connecticut. They was ripping down screens and theaters. That was showing the Arbuckle comedy. Because that's the thing. And they still wanted to show his comedy? Like, what? Dude, get out of here. They wanted Hollywood out of here. Arbuckle's films, they needed to take them out. Yo, and get this. His lawyer, they was trying to get the charge dropped down a little bit. They were like, nah, nah, nah. Y'all being too heavy. Now, Adolf Zucker... He had millions at stake on Arbuckle because remember now Hollywood's losing money because nobody wants to watch this Arbuckle's shows and stuff like that. So they're like, oh, no, we can't be losing money over this guy. So Adolf Zucker was like, he called San Francisco district attorney. Um, He spoke to he's like, yo, let me speak to Matt Brady. We got to squash this case. And Brady's pissed off. He's like, who has the audacity to offer me a bribe? And then. Not only that, see, this, oof, this is nasty. This is nasty. They called in Brady and they suggest that Arbuckle shouldn't be crucified just because Virginia Rappy, whatever her name is, she drunk too much and unalived. The DA was pissed. They was like, listen, all these interventions, y'all got to stop it. The trial is going to begin mid-November of 1921 in the San Francisco Superior Court. And Arbuckle was going to take the stand. So Arbuckle took the stand and he had no remorse or sympathy to Virginia at all. None. He didn't feel sorry. His lawyers, they were worse. They was like this broad was loose. She slept around New York, Paris, Hollywood. So They had all of this conflicting testimony going on. When the jurors was done, they wanted to acquit Arbuckle. They was like, nah, free him, free him. A mistrial was declared. Yo, there was 43 hours of deliberating and a mistrial was declared. So, you know, you only got to pay. These dudes have so much money. You only got to pay one juror, right? We need to look into this whole criminal system because this is ridiculous. Then they did a second trial and it was the same thing. 10 to 2 for conviction. So Fatty, who was out on bail, he had to sell his estate, um, his home, the home in, in L.A., and his fleet of nice cars to pay for his lawyer fees. Now, the district attorney, Brady, he wanted to nail Fatty in the worst way possible. Arbuckle was acquitted in the third trial on April 12, 1922. It was due to incredibly confused testimony by 40 witnesses, mostly drunk at the time of the incident and the lack of specific evidence, such as a bloody bottle. Um, so the jury also made a comment. Acquittal is not enough for Roscoe Arbuckle. We feel that a big injustice has been done here to him and there was no proof whatsoever that any crime was done. So on the courtroom steps, Arbuckle told the press, they like, he's like, this is the most solemn moment of my life. My innocence of this hideous charge preferred against me has been proved. I am grateful to my fellow men and women. My life has been devoted to the production of clean pictures for the happiness of my children. I shall try to enlarge my field of usefulness. So that my art shall have a wider service. So he he did all of that speech and stuff like that. It was short lived uh, because the moment that man was freed, he was not forgiven. Virginia's boyfriend had a bit of comment to say. He sat there and he was like, listen, Virginia had the most remarkable determination. Um, This is what happens when you take trash and give them a whole bunch of money and then you make them idols. Some people don't know how to get a kick out of life. Except in a beastie way. They are the ones that have all of these escapades. Because, you know, it's it's the old word, but I I don't know how YouTube is going to take that. So, you know, all of these S escalates and the degenerate of Rome. Ooh, this does sound like Babylon. Or he might have added Babylon. So Madam Eleanor Glenn, the movie's colonies tone setter, she took to the comments and she was like, listen, if they are immoral, hang them and do not show their pictures, suppress them, but don't make them all suffer because of this Arbuckle party. But I don't see any of these things happening in Hollywood. And if they are these dope parties, 
they must be very small. So Paramount canceled Arbuckle's contract for $3 million and his films were just thrown away, causing the studio to lose a million dollar write-off. That's it. So they did all of this and they wrote it off anyway. Fatty the Funny Man career was finished and he was banned from acting and most of his friends just fell off. But some of them, some he had some friends that stayed faithful to him mm. and they made him change his name um, to Will Be Good. What? Later on, just adopted the name William Goodrich. Why is that name so familiar? So anyway, he ended up getting employment at, as a comedy director, but he wanted to act. He wanted to be on the big screen because they say Hollywood and fame is like a rug with a capital D. Every time they would see him in the street, they'd be like, I'm coming, Virginia, because that was um, a role she had. So Arbuckle started drinking a lot. And around that time when, you know, they denied him in 1931, he was drinking and driving. Yo, he was so blatant that he hung the bottle outside the car and he was like, uh, there goes the evidence. Was he reminiscing about that other bottle that happened 10 years ago? He was broken. He was broken um, and he passed away at 46, June 28, 1933. Now Hollywood meant more than dreamland. It was forever linked with scandal in the mind's of millions so that was the first part of it that i'm reading i want to know if y'all into this if y'all into it i will keep on going i'm lying i'm gonna keep on going anyway this mess is interesting as hell and i know somebody's gonna want to read i don't even care if it's just one person this is crazy this is diabolical this gotta be investigated like this book was banned and um i really don't think i can stop reading it so the reason I am, you will not see my face mostly is because I my head is in this book and I'm like reading and you're getting my firsthand expressions like orally. But anyway, let me know what y'all think. I'm going to edit this part and I'm going to just put it out. Let me know if y'all want me to keep on going because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to keep on going. Uh, but let me know what y'all think in the comments.